Barracuda. It's a brand new show from Teal Town USA highlighting the San Jose Barracuda throughout this season. The NHL preseason is well underway and with AHL training camp looming, in this premiere edition I'll provide an early overview of how the Barracuda roster is shaping up this year and focus in on some of the many new faces you'll see this season. This is Teal Town USA in the Reef. So welcome to In The Reef, a brand new project here at Teal Town USA. I'm Kevin Lacey and I'll be here providing Barracuda content for you throughout this season. Should be a lot of fun. It's going to be an interactive show as all of our Teal Town USA content normally is. Um, just this particular episode is pre-recorded here on September 21st before the Sharks take on the Vegas Golden Knights just because of uh, trying to get everything coordinated. Obviously, we are recording on a brand new platform. If you've seen some of the other Teal Town USA videos and, and podcasts and whatnot uh, over the summer, this is still a work in progress as indicated by last week's recording of this very episode, which was unusable, which is really unfortunate. So this is take two. This is going to be the better show anyway. Uh, you know, I'm going to limit this to 30 minutes if I can because on this Barracuda show I want to give everyone a nice digestible uh, bit of content but not overwhelm everyone and, and, and tire everyone out and whatnot and I want people to be able to go on say their lunch breaks or whatnot and, and take 30 minutes listen to the show we do have this for example uh, on video uh, on youtube but if you're listening on one of your favorite podcaster podcatchers uh, that will be perfectly fine because for the most part this won't be a video centric show i do have a couple of graphics to pull up for you here today but more or less Hey, if you want to go into the kitchen and make yourself a pizza or dinner or lunch or whatever and just listen while it's in the background, go right ahead. You won't be missing anything other than my pretty face. No, I'm just kidding on that part. Um, but we will have guests throughout this season on the show, so it won't just be me uh, just talking, talking, talking all the time uh, like I already am right now. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a great journey, so I hope you enjoy the show this season. Um, of course, if you are brand new to Teal Town USA or watching this as your very first exposure to Teal Town USA, you can find us on Twitter at Teal Town USA. We also have our TealTownUSA.com website with plenty of great content. Uh, this is certainly not the only show. We've got a lot of other podcasts, vodcasts, etc. And um, I'm at Kevin Lacey 22 If you need to send in any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, whatever, let me know. Let me know. So, but let's get on to the show. You know, the, the preseason is underway. Uh, AHL training camp starts eh, sometime this week. Um, so if you're watching this right before the start of the regular season, it will have already taken place unfortunately i will be unfortunately i will be out of the country effective tomorrow until into the start of the the season so that we're getting to kind of an early jump here so i expect the roster to be what it, what i'm going to tell you today but you never know i mean last year the sharks traded for eric carlson when rudolph balsers was clearly going to be what the barracuda were built around that didn't happen. So, uh, you know, Doug Wilson's probably going to flip the script tomorrow. But for now, this is how the Barracuda is as I see it. I'm going to pull up this graphic right now and show you the lines. Or not the lines, I should say, but my depth chart for the Barracuda. Uh, certainly not the lines that I expect to see. But as you can tell, the San Jose Barracuda are going to be absolutely stacked this year, especially on the back end with the defense and the goaltending. It's going to be a very curious fight to see who gets in to a regular lineup spot. Now at the forward still, there's a bunch of extras. 
Jake McGrew is not on this list. Jake McGrew was sent back to juniors and on Friday night in his first game had two goals for Spokane. So he's uh, well on the way to the junior season. And let me actually talk about Jake McGrew here real quick because he's a player who did great things in the uh, rookie tournament down in Southern California at the uh, the rookie faceoff, um, but just kind of was there during the Sharks training camp. I mean, he didn't look he didn't look bad. He just was kind of there. So, with the number of forwards that the Barracuda will have this season, yeah, there's so many people on this roster. It's just ridiculous. Doug Wilson and Doug Wilson Jr. The scouting staff have done a tremendous job in in building up this farm system over the last 3 or 4 years now. Uh, bringing in a lot of free agent prospects and adding, you know, as many late round picks as you can because you never know who the next Sasha Chmielewski might be or Ivan Shakovich. You're going to hear those names a lot this year. And uh, so with kind of the roster, the lack of available, available spots, uh, Jake McGrew was sent back to juniors and that worked out great for Noah Gregor last year. Noah Gregor was in the same spot and uh, just didn't have a role with the team. So they sent him to juniors and he went all the way to the Memorial Cup playoffs. Uh, fantastic year in juniors. And, and he has had a wonderful training camp so far. I mean, talk about a player who... He's a player that I was very excited about. If you watch a, a show that I am on from time to time called Teal Tinted Glasses, check that out as well. Um, he's a player that I was really happy with getting in the draft in, um, I believe it was 2017, if I'm not mistaken. And he kind of wasn't impressive in his first couple of camps with the Sharks, but Last year, he came out, really had seemed to have worked on his foot speed, and then this year, it's just been tremendous. That year, that overage year in juniors has has done great things for Noah Gregor. And I'm the more, I'm more of a cautious person here at Tilltown USA, so I like to temper my expectations on, on prospects and whatnot. But Noah Gregor, you know, especially with overage stats, but those I think are going to translate here to the professional game. He has improved so much. He's done wonderfully so far on a line with Jeff VL and Joachim Blickfeld, another overage player in juniors last year. Um, they are going to light up the Barracuda uh, top six here and uh, really push guys like Chikovic, Chmielewski, uh, Alex True, if he's on the roster, or Auntie Soomela, if he's on the roster. I'm going to get to those guys in a bit. But um, this line of Yell, Gregor, and Blickfeld have done great things. Blickfeld, of course, comes in with an, an elite shot. Um, he's just a little too light for my liking, but this has easily been, and you want to obviously progress upward. This has easily been Joachim Blickfeld's best training camp that I've seen him at so far. Um, and now here in the preseason, he's already ha he already has a goal and he scored in the Teal versus White, Ricci versus Marchment scrimmage last Sunday. Um, so we know what Blickfeld can bring. It's just a matter, uh, or as far as talent goes, it's just a matter of is he big enough to sustain that offense in the men's pro game? Uh, you know, every time I see him, every time we hear great things about Joachim Blickfeld, it's always against younger competition. So now it's time to see whether or not his slight frame can, can do it. But so far, good things. I like what I'm seeing, and I expect he will be... Uh, a top six forward for sure with the Barracuda. He still has an outside shot. Even Noah Gregor, I think, at this point, have an outside shot of making the Sharks roster. Ivan Shakovic and Sasha Chmielewski, of course, are the names that most of you were talking about here over the summer and into last year and even the year before when they both played for the Barracuda and dragged the Barracuda into an improbable playoff spot with that amazing run of uh, winning, I believe it was the last seven games of this, the regular season to scratch and claw into a playoff position there. Um, these guys are the real deal. They will be NHL players as far as I'm concerned. Um, I don't think that there is 
any problem with them not being NHL players right now. These are young kids. Uh, they're only 20 years old and um, they have time on their side. Uh, so how I expect the Barracuda, despite the, the depth chart I showed you earlier, what I'm thinking that the top six lines might be, especially as Auntie Suomala, Suomela, uh, I'm going to call him Suomela a lot because that's what it is in Finland, um, but uh, he's looking like he might end up on the Sharks roster this year. So I'm salivating at a Chakovich, True, Chmielewski top line with a VL, Gregor, and Blickfeld second line. And that just pushes more talent down to the third and fourth lines. I mean, you've got Leon Bergman, who's had a nice camp, who was picked up as a free agent from the DEL. He's 20 years old, and he's got a little bit of a snarl to his game, too. So him lining in on in the bottom six lines, uh, yeah, bottom six lines, with the talent of being potentially in the top six with the Barracuda, uh, I think that, that snarl is going to work well no matter where he's at in the lineup and then you're looking at Jaden Hobgawaks who was outstanding to start the year last year as so many of the Barracuda were last year um, Jaden Hobgawaks uh, is going to you know hopefully a fire lit under him uh, because he's going to potentially lose his top six spot in in the Barracuda to start the year so uh, consistency is the name of his game, along with speed, speed, speed. He's a brilliant skater, best skater in probably the organization. Um, but he, everything's got to come together for him, and he's another smaller player. Um, so we'll see if he strives here in his sophomore year with the Barracuda, rather than gets the whole sophomore slump, as as you always hear about. Um, just want to uh, also discuss. Some of the prospects I talked about, uh, McGrew, Gregor, Chmielewski, Chakovic. Another one that is always talked about is Ryan Merkley. Now, this is a defenseman, not a forward, but Ryan Merkley um, will not be on the Barracuda this year. Um, but there is a lot of question as to where he fits in with this roster, so uh, with this organization. So while Ryan Merkley may not be on the Barracuda to start the year, he should finish it with with uh, with us. It's just that Ryan Merkley is so polarizing. You know, you love him or you hate him, and there's no, there's not a whole lot in between. I I'm trying to be in between here. Um, I think he's got amazing talent. He's got um, a poise about him that. It it's got to be more consistent, of course, as as with all the young players, but. Ryan Merkley, when he's on, he's really on. And luckily, in his uh, couple-game tryout with the Barracuda at the end of last year, um, he looked fine. He really did. He really did. Um, but then you got the Ryan Merkley that showed up at the development camp, who seemed to not really take things too seriously. And then here, even at the start of training camp, um, he was making a lot of timing mistakes, which... Uh, you always hear the, the, the biggest difficulty that young players have transitioning from juniors to the professional game is their timing and the pace. Uh, but Ryan Merkley last week, uh, for example, was burned three consecutive times on one-on-one on -on -one drills, one of which was Joe Thornton and his two artificial knees. Um, so Ryan Merkley's got to be better at his preparation and understanding what it is to be a pro. Um, all, all of the, uh, you know, is he, is he seeing a sports psychologist, all that stuff aside, just focusing on the hockey because that's all we know. We don't have all these facts about what might be happening off the ice or in his life or whatnot, um, you know, unless unless we talk to him one on one, and that's even if we do, not going to get a true answer here. Uh, speculation sometimes isn't worth it. Let's let this kid just play out his his career here, um, and hopefully he turns into an NHL player someday. Um, so that's my Ryan Merkley take. But he has uh, trended upward here in camp. Uh, after his really rough start. So when he does get sent back to juniors, wherever that will be, um, at that time we can reassess what Ryan Merkley 
will bring to the Sharks, to the Barracuda and whatnot. Um, who else will not be on the Barracuda this year? That is a huge question that we've had even since last year. Um, Dylan Gambrell, very unlikely to be on the Barracuda, and he was one of the best players on the team last year. I don't know whether or not he really is a top six NHL forward. He definitely won't start the season as that. Um, but I think he can find his niche as a Melker Carlson type. Um, he's very defensively smart. I like his perimeter game, which I usually don't say things like that. I usually want to see how players drive to the middle. Daniel, you're taken right now. You're taken. Uh, a lot of people are, have their eyes on him and he's got a, a nice skill set nice speed and whatnot, but he really doesn't drive to the middle. And I want to see him use that great skating and try it and see what happens. And, and, and I think that your Tykin needs some time to adjust where to the North American rink and hopefully just feel more comfortable, more confident. Um, Cause he is a confident player with the puck on the boards. It's just a matter of, uh, not getting knocked off the puck. And Dylan Gambrell's kind of the same way, except for Dylan Gambrell knows where to find the open space on the perimeter and set himself up for a, a pass to the slot. So that's what I, I really like about him. Now, physically, if you're talking about digging into the trenches and whatnot, that's where Gambrell struggles a lot, and I'd like to see some progression there. So with that in mind, maybe he sees some time with the Barracuda this year, uh, but he'll definitely, to me, start with the Sharks. And then the other name that jumps out at me on the forwards, where is he going to be, is Alex True. Now, I've been singing the praises of Alex True here the last couple of years. A big, big forward, undrafted free agent signing out of Denmark. Uh, really... It's funny when you think about big forwards because typically you want those guys, you know, that's the guy that I want in front of the net causing chaos and whatnot, uh, you know, screening the goalie and all that. I don't think Alex True is really that type of player, so I don't know where he fits in if that's the role that the Sharks need him to be because I actually think Alex True is best on the rush despite his size and whatnot. I think... The high slot, especially on the power play, is his sweet spot. Uh, if you're talking about on the right side with his left hand shot, it's easier for his big frame to come across and, and rip that puck short side or rip a one timer. Um, so, but he brings a lot of intangibles, obviously the size, but he's defensively smart. Um, He's, he's confident out there. He's a little streaky, um, but, I mean, that's how the name of the game is for a lot of late-round picks, undrafted players and whatnot. Um, and, hey, streaky's not necessarily bad when you're scoring in five, six, seven games in a row, you know? So, Alex True, he had a great second year for the Barracuda last year. He struggled in the playoffs. No injury knowledge that we that we're aware of um but alex true i had said he will be the 13th forward on the sharks this year and now i don't know i now i don't know and that's why i put him on the barracuda depth chart you saw earlier because peter DeBoer, head coach of the Sharks, says that uh auntie suomela is for all intents and purposes has said it's his roster spot to lose uh, not with those, not that wording, but that's the the vibe that I got out of some of his comments. And Suomela really struggled with the Barracuda last year, and I don't know what it was to be quite honest, because uh, he started the year obviously making the Sharks out of camp, um, couldn't really find his footing when they got to real NHL games, got sent down to the Barracuda. And really should have torn it up. He had such an amazing year in Liga back in the 2017-18 season in Finland. And that's why the Sharks signed him. But I thought, oh, if he can score in Liga, he can score in the AHL. And it never came. And he just he found himself as a fourth-line player and a scratch even in the playoffs. And the Barracuda really struggled to score goals the second half of the year. 
Um, so, but he's had he's had a really nice camp this year. He looks more confident. I, I yeah, I'll say he looks more confident. I have a hard time saying that because he always seems to have a smile on his face. He doesn't ever seem to be pouty about himself. So I don't really know what it was with him last year, but hopefully the shark the the sharks have him on the year the whole year. Uh, if that's where he starts out. And if not, um, I got to think that Alex True might be in the mix there on the Sharks. Or even Noah Gregor. Jochen Blickfeld, perhaps. Although I think a center would be better suited for the Sharks to start the year. Uh, to go along with Gambrella I mentioned earlier. And all of that, and I didn't even talk about the goaltending. So let's dive into the goaltending here. Antoine Bebo, where will he end up? Uh... I don't know. I really don't know. Just like Alex True, I was emphatic in saying Antoine Bibo will be the backup for Martin Jones this season. And I said it since the trade deadline. Um, now, right now, in theory, is the the best time to trade Aaron Dell if that's the route that Doug Wilson wants to go. Uh, Aaron Dell, of course, you know, you're, you'll be looking at other teams who are unsatisfied with their goaltending and looking to make a change. And if Antoine Bibo were having a strong camp for the Sharks, I think it would make the decision easier or harder, depending on how you're looking at it. Um, I think it would make it a lot more stomach a bowl we'll come up with that's your word for the week guys here stomach a ball but anyway um it would make it a lot easier to trade Aaron Dell who has one year left on his deal at a little under two million um that's cap space that can really be saved up for a trade deadline acquisition or an upgrade somewhere especially if Gambrell, True, Suomela, whoever ends up on the Sharks struggles. Um, if Bebo were having a good camp, it'd make it a lot easier. But Antoine Bebo, he, he had a great first year two years ago for the Barracuda. And I think he had a very good year last year for the team. Now, a lot of people are down on his numbers. And I don't think that's fair. If you, re, you know, have caught some of the old Teal Town After Darks that I talked about the Barracuda or again Teal Town Glasses, Teal Tinted Glasses, another show that I am on. Um, I talked about how Antoine Bibo and Yosu Coronash platooned all year and the first time either of them were pulled from a, from a game I believe was in mid to late February. Uh, the goaltending was super strong even as the team started incredibly hot faltered the second half the goaltending remained strong it wasn't until the defense started to wear down and I think all those young bodies on the Barracuda this is going to be the third year out of the last four might even be the fourth straight year where the Barracuda are fielding the youngest roster in all of Northern American professional hockey um I think they wore down and eventually that affected the goaltending stats because Joseph Coronash was an AHL All-Star with outstanding stats. And he finished with a 9-11 save percentage. And Antoine Bibo was below that. But Antoine Bibo, when people were saying he's not having that good of a year, he was having a 19, 9-15 save percentage until, I think, early March. So it just... The, the, the rails fell off in front of the goalies. Um, so... But back to Bibo. As far as will he be on the Sharks, will he be on the Barracuda, or will he not be in the organization at all? That's where I'm kind of leaning at this point, because the Sharks signed Andrew Shortridge, uh, who was the basically the top NCAA goalie last year for Quinni Quinnipiac, um, had a 940 save percentage, if I recall correctly. Um, Andrew Shortridge didn't sign with the Sharks to be the third string goalie on the Barracuda this year. He's trying to push for playoff playing time. Playoff time too, sure, uh, but playing time. And Josef Koronash, a player who it has driven me mad when people said Josef Koronash will be on the Sharks uh, opening night. And I've, I've said from day one, so if, you, if you're, again, new to hearing me talk about the Barracuda and whatnot... I cannot reiterate this enough, so I'll say it now. Joseph Koronash is not ready 
to be an NHL goalie. Now, I do think he will be an NHL goalie in some capacity, but he's only 21 years old, just like Chmielewski, just like Chikovic. What's the rush? There really isn't a rush here with Coronash. So he has a half year, essentially, of pro hockey experience because he platooned with Bebo. So Joseph Coronash now, you'd think the Sharks organization wants him to get a full season of 60, 55, 60 games in the AHL and see how he handles that. And if he does great things, then next year you're looking at Coronash possibly being the backup. But right now you've got Antoine Bibo, who is 25 years old, doesn't have a whole lot left to prove at the AHL raw at the AHL level. So if he ends up not making the Sharks as it appears to be, he's going to clear waivers. There's nobody should be worried about Antoine Bibo being picked up off waivers by another team. And even if he is, again, you're looking at Jones Dell, Coronash uh, Shortridge, Zach Sachenko, a, a free agent pickup for the Barracuda this year, who was projected to be one of the top goalies in the draft in 2016. And the Sharks get him for, or the Barracuda, but essentially the Sharks get him for free too. He's going to be pushing for a spot. I do think he's got work to do in his game, but where does Bebo go? Unless the Sharks work out a loan situation maybe um i don't know what happens there so that's going to be curious but expect yosef coronash to get the bulk of the starts this year and if he ends up with a sophomore slump andrew shortridge is there to pick it up and possibly run with it and maybe next year we're talking about andrew shortridge being the backup for the sharks i not saying that's going to happen just saying it's something to think about. So uh, these are all young kids. The The name of the game, as we joke on Teal City Glasses, there's another plug for them, is We'll See. And I basically that's going to become, you know, if you're, I said earlier, in the kitchen making dinner or something, maybe that's your little drinking game for this show. I don't know, is the We'll Sees. So, um, but yeah, so talked about the goaltending talked about the forwards let's talk about the defense the defense is for me the brightest spot on this roster this year now the depth chart that i'm going to bring this up right now again uh the depth chart that i showed you earlier i've played around with it a lot this is not the same depth chart that i even put out on twitter at kevin lacy 22 uh, a few weeks ago so right now i'm thinking mario ferraro easily the best defenseman on this team he is a stud of a prospect i he's going to be an nhler again had a wonderful year for umass and uh the sky's the limit for this kid his mobility is incredible and the thing that really caught my eye about mario ferraro versus a, a prospect like ryan merkley was when Mario Ferraro has made mistakes in camp, and l let's be honest, Mario Ferraro has made mistakes in, in camp, and that's okay. Uh, we don't have to sing praises about every single player and prospect and whatnot. Let's be real. I want to bring some realism on this show to you guys, you know. Uh, Mario Ferraro has made some mistakes, but the, the really nice thing that I like about this player is you can see the wheels turning just as his his physical wheels are, are motoring, um, you can read his play and go, oh man, like read his mind and go, oh man, I just messed up there. I'm going to do everything I can to rectify this, not next shift, right now. And Mario Ferraro, because of his mobility, has been able to adapt to whichever situation that I've seen him in so far. So, you now. The nice thing, again, is the Sharks defensively, like the Barracuda, it's probably their strongest position. So, hopefully it'll be their strongest position. Last year, it should have been their strongest position. I thought the defense really just didn't have the chemistry. Um, but because the Sharks have six NHL defensemen, and there's Dalton Prout, who should be on the Sharks roster this year, 
Don't know about the status of Redeem Shimmick, so maybe Mario Ferraro gets a cup of coffee to start the year with the Sharks, but I think ultimately the plan is to keep him with the Barracuda. And if as many of these guys get full years with the Barracuda, I think that's going to do wonderful things for their careers down the road. Sure, you want to see them get some NHL games and see where they're at, but I think it's equally as important to let them stabilize in the same environment for a full season before even getting uh, thinking about bringing them up to the big show. Uh, but Ferraro's going to do great things. Um, Jake Middleton falls down a little bit in in the depth chart here and that's the I think he would be the other player you could consider for a spot if Redeem Shimmick is unable to start the year uh, in playing condition. Uh, Jake Middleton I felt bad when Dalton Prout was signed because I think Middleton going from being a drafted player by the Kings but going unsigned getting a tryout with the Barracuda signing, getting a tryout with the Sharks, signing, and eventually making his NHL debut last year. It's an incredible story for Jake Middleton, and he's really proven himself to be a leader. He wore an A last year. I expect he will again this year. Of course, John McCarthy is the captain, and and uh, with the, Shar the, Barracuda, the Sharks need him to be there for the Barracuda. Um, but Jake Middleton has really uh, solidified himself as a top four AHL defenseman with some NHL potential. Um, so he's probably going to be a shuttle guy here, uh, especially if the Sharks decide to keep Ferraro in the NHL or the AHL for the full year. Nick DeSimone, if they need more of an offensive presence from the back end, Nick DeSimone probably gets the call. And the wild card in the whole thing for me is Trevor Carrick. Trevor Carrick picked up from the Carolina Hurricanes for Kyle Wood. Um, that was a very interesting acquisition uh, in, in my eyes. First off, Trevor Carrick um, won a Calder Cup last year for Charlotte, so he brings a championship pedigree right there. He is kind of an all-around defenseman in that, I mean, he was suspended twice last year, uh, so he definitely brings a physical game, um, but he also has plenty of offensive capability and... Which is interesting because I actually haven't liked his shot, uh, his like literal shot when he's uh, had the puck in the scrimmages and, and practices and whatnot that I've seen so far. Um, but Trevor Carrick is a dark horse to see some time with the Sharks this year because he's another player that I don't think has a whole lot left to prove at the AHL level. Now I have him as the second right defenseman on the Barracuda depth chart I showed earlier. But he's been practicing on the left side for the most part. And I think he can kind of get put into any situation. And then I know the name that jumped out to you is Jeremy Waugh. Jeremy Waugh I have right now down at the fourth right defenseman spot. And it's not to his fault. Uh, Jeremy Waugh had a uh, good year last year. He struggled to find consistent ice time. And... If he doesn't develop more, that's going to pose its problem a problem again here this year. Um, Jeremy Waugh, or hope, well, first off, let's start off with hopefully Jeremy Waugh in the media guide this year is spelled correctly. No more Jeremy Waugh. But uh, so if he has his name spelled right in the media guide, he's already having a better year than last year. <laughs> but Jeremy Waugh still has a lot to bring he's his mobility looks good um boy i keep using that word mobility i gotta his skating we'll go with his skating his agility looks good last year i think my biggest problem was that he was way too much on his toes sometimes you want to be on your toes sometimes you want to be on your heels in this case for him he was always on his toes always slouched over and i think problem was he was still compensating for recovering from his knee surgery. Obviously, his injury woes are well documented. Um, but Jeremy Waugh has the potential to have a wonderful year for this team. But if everyone else in front of him has a wonderful year as well, Jeremy Waugh might be a player that ends up getting traded just because of the numbers game and just because 
He's got some name value that that could bring in some additional help wherever the Sharks feel they need it. Um, Tony Sund, uh, he's number 56 for now. He has an out clause to my knowledge, according to Oli Seppala. Thank you for sending that tweet in to me. Oli tells me that Tony Sund has an out clause to go back to Finland this year if he doesn't make the Sharks. And sorry, Tony, you're not making the Sharks this year. But I have liked what I've seen out of him so far. Um, he's got a booming shot. He's a big defenseman, but he's an offensive big defenseman. He's got a booming shot. I heard that in Liga last year, his defensive game was a huge work in progress. Now, I think that he's looked okay defensively. I think his back checking has been strong. I think that um, his mobility is good. There it is again, mobility. Uh, um, it's the new NHL. It's the new AHL. You got to be mobile. I mean, hell, Keaton Middleton's a big guy, and he's still a mobile guy. Uh, but Tony Sund... Um, might end up back with TPS, which wouldn't shock me at all because I do know that he's a week before he signed with the Sharks, he signed a new deal to leave. Uh, gosh, who was he with last year? I'm blanking on it, guys. Sorry about that. Sport Vasa, I believe, is who he was with last year. Um, he left Vasa to go to TPS and then all of a sudden signed with the Sharks. So I think there is some uh, credibility to what Oli tells me about the out clause. And if that's so... That's going to open up a spot for Jeremy Waugh to get in the lineup. Nikolai Nijov has had a, a fantastic summer coming out of nowhere. Coming out of the VHL, which is the level below the KHL, uh, with no offensive stats. Don't expect offensive stats from Nijov. But he has been so steady in camp that he ended up earning himself a tryout or a, a, a contract after development camp. And then he's looked really good here in NHL camp. I, I expect him to be uh, a really nice situational defenseman for Roy Sommer, especially if you're talking about a one-goal lead with under two minutes left. I think you throw out Middleton and Carrick, or you throw out Nijov and Ferraro, something like that. Um, so Nijov, I'm expecting good things from this year. Uh, and I didn't see that coming at all. So great job again by the scouting staff. And then poor Keaton Middleton sitting at the bottom of my depth chart. And again, just like Jeremy Wall, it's not his fault. It's just there's so many good defensemen on this roster here this year, guys. Uh, so Keaton Middleton had a really nice year last year. He's one of the guys that I thought kind of tailed off here in February, March, and April. But Keaton looks good in camp. And... Uh, He's certainly deserving of a top six spot on the Barracuda this year. It's just a matter of who's going to line up where. So um, then, yeah, <laughs> uh, this is normally the part of the show where I'll ask you for your tweets and whatnot um, or your comments in the chat room. But since I don't have that set up yet, uh, go ahead again, tweet at Teal Town USA. Tweet at Kevin Lacey 22 Tweet at whichever guests I end up bringing on the show here coming up. Of course, if you uh, subscribe to Teal Town USA, if you haven't already, please do so. But subscribe so that whatever we do these shows, you'll you'll be alerted, especially when they go live. You're gonna want to be a part of the action here. Uh, so, um, but yeah, please subscribe, set the alert, um, and and be ready to rock here once the AHL season begins. Um, just to wrap up everything going on here with the Barracuda, of course, training camp for them will start here in a few days. Again, I'm recording this on Saturday, September 21st, so if you're watching it late, uh, they will have already begun. But uh, preseason is Friday and Saturday, so the 27th and 28th, both Games are at Solar for America Ice against the Colorado Eagles. You can get your tickets for $10 there. And uh, that those games are fun too, the preseason AHL games, because you want to talk about a dogfight to make the NHL roster. There's going to be a dogfight to make the AHL roster, especially among those defensemen I just talked about. Uh, but you're looking at players like Tristan Langan and Ivan Kozarenkov, who might start the year in the ECHL. We'll see. Uh, there's a we'll see for you guys. Uh, Joel Kelman, who I 
think has looked okay. I haven't been... He hasn't knocked my socks off here coming over from Brinus and Sweet in the SHL this year. I expected him to have a better camp, but uh, Joel Kelman will be pushing for a spot at the forwards along with the forwards along with Marcus Fella. Uh, Evan Weinger, who was a regular with the roster last year, he might get pushed out depending on where Daniel you're taken and Blickfeld and all these guys uh, wind up, but. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun seeing seeing some of the fringe AHLers, so to speak. And who knows where these guys end up, too. The Sharks still don't have an ECHL affiliate. So I'm uh, guessing it's going to be another kind of handshake agreement with Orlando? I don't know here. We'll see. Um, but again, um, feel free to send everything in to me here. Um, do you want to wish... Some of the former Barracuda members, well, in their future endeavors. Of course, Francis Perron, the name that was talked about a lot last year, is no longer with the team. He was traded to Vancouver. I don't think this is a big loss, guys. I really don't. Francis Perron, if you recall, um, I kept trying to point out to people because he had such an amazing start to the year where he scored all of his goals and was an AHL All-Star. He only had three goals in, I think, his last 35 or 37 games, something like that. So, is his offense really going to be missed when it wasn't there to begin with? Uh, I like Francis Perron, but I'm fine with the trade because the Barracuda have a ton of forwards. Kyle Wood, of course, was traded, as I mentioned, for Trevor Carrick. Uh, Kyle Wood looked good last year for the team, um, but just... He didn't progress any, I don't think. Um, Kevin Fitzgerald, though, speaking of progression, he had a great year for the Barracuda last year. He was the most improved player to me, so it is sad to see him go. He also goes to the Charlotte Checkers on an AHL deal, so Fitzgerald and Wood are kind of a tandem deal going over there. John Martin, you will see this season, just you will see him for the Tucson Roadrunners. So some interdivisional action here against John Martin, who had his easily best year professionally last year for the Barracuda. But again, victim of a numbers game. TJ Hensick talked about John McCarthy and his leadership earlier. I'm sad that TJ Hensick couldn't find a spot with the Barracuda because I think when you have all these young kids, it helps to have more than one veteran voice uh, you know, leading everyone along. But um, Hensick, just again, too many players. He goes back to Toledo, and who knows, maybe he ends up signing with the Barracuda again here the second half. Matt Fontaine has retired and gone back to school. So good for you, Matt, uh, and congratulations on your continued education. Rourke Chartier, oh boy, Rourke Chartier. I'm guessing his career is over, guys. Uh, it's sad to say. But uh, with the number of concussions that he's had that plagued him even in his junior career before he turned pro, and then he's had a number of them with the Barracuda, couldn't finish out either of the last two seasons for the team because of it. Um, he got his NHL games last year, which was awesome. But just uh, sad to see Rourke Chartier that his career is probably over. I'm only speculating on that. I have no factual evidence, but he is not signed anywhere and I don't expect him to be. And then last but not least, just on the farewells, Jonathan Dolan. I did want to get to Jonathan Dolan. He is still with the Sharks organization. He was loaned to Team Row in Sweden in the Allsvenskan, which is the, the tier below the SHL. Jonathan Dolan is another polarizing player in that he, for what the rumors that I heard were, because again, no facts, we're just speculating here. Um, Jonathan Dolan requested a trade out of Utica because he felt he was an NHL player. And he only had a decent year for Utica, but he didn't light the world on fire or anything. He wasn't the best player on Utica last year. So for him to go out and be kind of pouty for for that organization. I didn't blame them for trading trading him away. Now, I was super excited for the Sharks to acquire Jonathan Dolan because he has amongst the most talent to bring out of all of the Sharks' prospects. But if his attitude is going to be an issue, then 
I think at this point, you hope that Jonathan Dolan has a nice year for Team Row so that the Sharks can trade him away. I don't think the Sharks really gave up much to get him, so that's the positive. I didn't think the world of Linus Carlson. Uh, so, uh, but it, Jonathan Dolan for now is considered as an asset to the team. He'll be a restricted free agent after this season. I assume the Sharks will qualify him to keep his rights, but I don't expect to see Jonathan Dolan return in Teal at all. So, um, but as far as the Barracuda go this year, uh, the roster is still in a lot of fluctuation. I hope you've enjoyed what I think it will turn out to be. I'll show you my depth chart one last time here. Um, so I think there's a, there's a lot to gain, gain here with the top six. Uh, John McCarthy right now is uh, the second best left wing that I have. But guys like Max Latunov will need to get into the lineup. Um, Daniel Yurtaikin, Joel Kelman probably. Uh, you know, I hope it's not a Philip Sandberg situation where he finds himself out of an AHL spot and goes back to Sweden kind of thing. I'm expecting some of the centers and right wings to slide over to the left wing. Um, but it's just going to be kind of musical chairs here for Roy Sommer. So, uh, have fun, but I'll... I'm going to enjoy watching this team this year. Again, please subscribe to Teal Town USA. We have a lot of content for you. Live vodcasts, podcasts, um, of course, the After Dark program after every Sharks game. Uh, we've got the Pucknologist coming back in a brand new format. That's going to be a lot of fun. AJ has a lot of really cool plans for that show this year. And then, of course, In the Reef, the brand new Barracuda show. We're going to, again, have fun discussing content that you don't normally get exposed to. Uh, I remember, I mean, the big thing for me about this show is that 10, 15 years ago, I could not find any information about the AHL online. It was so difficult. I found it easier to follow European hockey than it did the AHL. So shows like this, I want to give as much knowledge as I can. Again, I'm a guy. But I think I know what I'm talking about, <laughs> at least as well as I as I can. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I've been following this for a long time. And uh, so I hope that you respect my views and uh, I'll bring on, you know, Ian or uh, my buddy Greg, who used to work for the Barracuda, you know, hockey jerk, other views to maybe counterpoint me because I'm not saying my way is right. Heck no. I'm going to be wrong. I've been wrong about prospects before. So, uh, it, heck, who knows? Jaden Hobgawaks might end up on the NHL roster this year. I don't know. That's that's what development is for. So, this show's going to develop. The Barracuda's going to develop. And I hope you enjoy the ride. So, as part of Teal Town USA, I'm Kevin Lacey. Thanks for watching In the Reef or listening on your favorite podcatcher. Again, please subscribe. And we'll see you here. Opening night is October 4th in Ontario, but the home opener is Friday, October 11th against San Diego. I will definitely be at that game once I've returned from Europe. So uh, see you then, guys.